determine what is a shitty machine or materials in this tattoo world. Um, what separates the pros against the scratcher, okay? And, and what they know opposed to what we know opposed to what they get opposed to what we get or are allowed to have. Most uh, companies sell only to pros um, the good materials because there's something going on and obviously we only get the shit of the world. Well, we're gonna change all that because the first way to change that is knowledge. To understand what separates the difference in those things. I get a lot of people saying, well, it's not the tool, it's the artist, it's the uh, technique, this and this. No, it's not, and we'll get to that. I'm sorry, I don't know what this spot is. I, If you know, I have been reunited with my favorite beanie. Tried to wash it, I think it's just soap. Kind of did the old school rub and wash. <clears throat> so, bear with me on this video because this is what's gonna separate your work. Hate, I don't care. Haters, you say, ah, oh, blah, 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 shop guys. Then if that's the case, why do you not use anything other than a custom build? Or professional? Or the materials have to be raw. They have to be good. 1012, 1018, cast iron, cast aluminum, um, uh, you know, brass, certain things like all the hardware, the real copper. Um, stuff like that. We've already determined that um, Chinese materials are all garbage. Now, the Chinese are getting smart and they're starting to, to use better materials. Now, it does not and will not matter in the end, though. Um, it's like having an authentic Zippo. Okay, now focus on this. It's like having an authentic zip, Zippo, okay, where you spend good money on because of the quality uh, and durability. Opposed to one of those cheap little Zippos that you buy for 12 bucks. It's not the real thing. It's not ever going to be the same. It's not ever going to work the same. It's not ever going to act the same. It's not going to carry the same uh, amount of fluid for the same amount of time. It's not, well, it, it lights my cigarette, so it does the job. No, 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 no. So you're the type of person that doesn't have passion and doesn't understand. Well, that's okay. Keep doing your Chinese stuff. Keep buying cheap stuff. And I'm not here to tell you to go buy the first $500 machine that you see or invest in the Aaron Kane $750 a pop shots. I mean, he makes good machines, obviously, but are you really paying for the name like Gucci and Prada or are you paying for the materials and the craftsmanship behind it? It, it really comes down to a lot of things, guys, and let's get technical, all right? I'm open to hate, obviously. I don't give a fuck, all right? So, <clears throat> let's start with the Chinese machine. You've seen them. eBay, Light in the Box, Amazon, uh, Craigslist, you name it. These are your Chinese machines. How do you tell? Simple. First of all, the design. Second of all, look how thin. We can keep going. Look at the inside. Look at the rear deck, the saddle. Look how thin that is. It's just bent, right? There's no weldings in here. There's no there's no really there's no craftsmanship here. Uh, basically, this was just a piece of metal that was flat. It was cut out by a machine uh, by mass quantity and then it was uh, bent. It was bent up. Okay, you could see the rolls. There's no craftsmanship here. You know what I'm saying? It was it, you could tell that a uh, CNC had done this, which it's okay, I'm not totally against cnc um, but for this video and this purpose, I'm going to let you know how to determine a good machine versus piece of garbage, Chinese crap. This is one of them. Um, the screws, they're trying, to, they're trying to make them like custom builds, if you look real close on these. You know, they're trying to get there, but it's the material we're looking at. We're not looking at what it looks like. Uh, I am going to judge a book by its cover on these. The vise here, we're, we're getting away from these screw type vices because this isn't really, it'll hold, but it's there's a lot of components in there. You want something solid. You want, 
the, the less pieces on a, a machine that we can get, the more uh, the build is is just more solid. You know what I mean? There's no there's no room for vibration, and and in tattooing, it's all about vibration down to your tips and your your tubes where uh, that needle will have to sit flush and uh, consistent with you know not having any slack in there, any movement side to side or up and down. And thus, this is why we will bend our needle um, with a slight curvature, uh, insert that, and use rubber bands. I see people using rubber bands and they don't touch their bar, needle bar, but it makes no sense. You're, you're, it doesn't make sense. You might be grabbing that needle to where it doesn't jump or do this down in the, the tip uh, slightly. But without that band, you're really taking the whole idea and reason behind those those rubber bands out. So let's take a look and let's focus on this. The metal used, garbage, okay? Garbage. The brass hardware, fake, garbage. Screws used for uh, contact, screw garbage strips out it's plastic um there's obviously there's a lot of ways that uh pro builders do they'll 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 insert a polyurethane type little ball inside of here to where it's okay and you won't strip out that threading but um if you look at the armature bar and if you look at the springs this metal is real it's it's really Fucking, there's no give to it. You know what I mean? It's really the tension there is hardcore, man. And um, you're not gonna get much out of it, man. You're gonna scratch. That's it. You're just gonna scratch the surface. There's no throw here. There's no. There's too much tension. It's it's way too thick. Or, or the consistency of this metal is shit. Um, the way that these run, within weeks, you'll start seeing holes being being uh, burnt through these front springs. You don't want that. And the reason is, is because the coil in, in the uh, circuit, the tank circuit, it, and your contacts are creating those sparks that are just gonna eat right through this stuff. And that's another difference. We can go on and on and on and on for days, but I want you to really take heed to how thick. One of the first things that, that I look for in a solid machine, if I don't have it in my hands, is the saddle. If, if your rear deck doesn't have any thickness to it, I can tell you right now that it's garbage. I can't say all of them, but I, I, I'm telling you the first thing that I look for in a quality machine is that saddle. Because usually that saddle is put onto the, this side plate by hand, okay, and welded on there. Same with the vice, the vice area. Now, there are pro builders out there that use um, one, and they do roll, but I mean, you can tell, you can tell the difference. Look for that rear deck. Look for this this area right back here. It's garbage. Next, look at for uh, your guts. Look at all your contacts. Make sure that those are solid materials like brass. Usually it's brass hardware, copper. Look for those, okay? Um, you can tell, all right? Focus on the thickness of that frame. If it looks stamped out, you're mass-produced uh, garbage. Now, I'm not saying that all mass-produced produced machines are shit, because they're not. I mean, with P9, what I want to do in Envision is have a machine design that is uh, coined by P9 and then mass-produced, because that people might like that design in specific. So in order to do that, I can't do it by hand, one by one by one by one, and, and uh, supply and demand's not going to take on that. So, of course, you have to use some sort of CNC machine and I know that a couple of good guys that I've met out there that are awesome builders have uh, they're all they do is work with their hands and you know what those are beautiful machines not one of the same that they make uh, frame design is going to be the same which makes it authentic and that truly puts the heart and the soul into that craftsmanship and that that person is sitting there and chiseling away and looking at every angle and that's another thing with uh, mass-produced machinery you know, uh, the QC inspectors will just look at it and have a little thing to go off of and, and assemble it. 
but with a true builder using these files like all these big guys okay and this is where I don't disrespect these big guys and where they should um, pay pay attention to how I feel and ask me what I think before going against me um, I really cherish the fact that that builders are putting all that effort and all that time I'm the same type I'm looking at every freaking angle and I'm looking at every tiny little tiny nook and little tiny cranny these guys don't do that zip, 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 cut it out sell it 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 no 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 professional builds by hand every square little tiny micro millimeter of that machine has been looked at and viewed in the the mind's eye of that builder and that's where it becomes important and that's where the craftsmanship the craftsmanship and the heart and the passion to this comes from that's when I say every machine that I'll get to you guys I will whoo that shit stinks let me smell a good one I will smell it it's because I'm smelling the raw iron the raw steel the the, the stuff that dreams are made out of and when I see dreams are made out of when it's put into a an artist's hands and they're creating beautiful artwork on this the, the uh, canvases of human live flesh to where they're going to represent and it really means something see it goes it goes in a chain in this in this business and this is where i separate myself from the rest even shop guys it starts from the builder and the passion the heart and soul going from here going into the hands of an artist that has heart and passion over bzz, putting beautiful uh, designs on human bodies and then it goes into the client and the customer that is receiving all those beauties it is a chain of events that is a beautiful thing and that is why the movement is created and started because I do not believe that the world and the masses should be kept buying this and doing this listen we can't stop it teach the right man there is room in this world for all of us what do you think the problem of this world is as a human race? I'm not even talking about the movement. I'm not even talking about pro versus scratcher. I'm talking about the world as a human being. There's a lot more to the movement that I vision and envision than just art. It is human being race, world, planet, earth. In Anunnaki's dialect, Saros, Saros, the world of cataclysms and destruction and many sorrows. That's what it's about. It ain't about nothing else. Do you see the chills on my fucking arm? That's because I have heart. I have soul. And I want this. Not this. This. Now, also, I want you to look at the coil, okay? Not the coil wire. We've already determined that it's aluminum alloy copper plated. We don't want that. I don't even know how, uh, what the frequencies are of the copper. I don't even know what the DNA looks like on that because I can tell you this. Copper in other countries is very expensive. So then I, I know that China's not mass producing real solid copper, uh, even coating over all these these uh, freaking coil wires. But, so let's not even jump into that. But let's look at a, uh, a pro build, um, kind of gummed up. I mess with them a lot. But um, let's look at a pro build coil core. Okay. It's gummed up a little bit, you know. Um, but do, do you see? Now, lathe. This is lathe. Even if it was CNC'd, it's still uh, quality. Okay. We're looking at 1018 steel core. Now, pay attention to this and look at it. Look at the threading. L look at all of it, okay? Look at the tops. All right? <clears throat> and that's not even a good one. It, it's, it's a quality core, but it's not a good one. Um, now, you look at a Chinese. Look at the little spots in, in the in the metal there. Some sort of uh, mixture of metals, cheap metals put together that that um, are crap. Now, 
Look at the plastic bobbin. All right. Plastic, another key point. Not poly on top for your coil washers. Not uh, no captain tape in here. No tape at all. No resins, no varnishes to uh, separate the wrapped coil wire. Okay. Just a plastic bobbin. And a couple of you guys in the movement had showed me a, a coil core that literally you could just pull right out. Yeah, the reason is is because they glue this to the plastic, all right? They glue this core inside of this bobbin, which is plastic, and over time, that'll heat up, it'll melt the glue, and that can just come right out. We don't want that. That will not happen with the Pro Build. It will not, I promise you. Magnetic SX, two pounds of pressure, uh, you know, clockwise, uh, anti-clockwise wrapped, okay? So, now, let's go look at springs. Look at springs, all right? Chinese springs. You've heard them. You heard what they sound like, you know? You, you, you see what they look like all the time. It's these, these chrome ones. You see the little bend in the, in, the, in the crease there, always. They're always the same, right? They're always the, the same cutouts and the same patterns and designs. Um, they're really thick, okay? They're real, the flexibility on these is ridiculous and stupid, especially with the rear spring. It's bad news. Yeah, he has to go right now because I'm taking him out for his birthday. So, see you guys later.